Hey everybody, Professor Z here, and welcome back to Art School Decoded. Today I am so excited because we are finally launching the very first class in my series of free courses that I'm going to be giving to you guys online right here on this channel. This class, Intro to Digital Photo, is one of my absolute favorites. For a little bit of context, I've been teaching Intro to Photo and Digital Photography at the college level for about seven years, and most of my students who take this at the university are paying about three grand for the class. You guys are gonna get all of that same great information, FaceTime with me, including all of my assignments, all of my worksheets, all of my tidbits, tricks, and tips. You're gonna get it all right here for free. So make sure that you click subscribe, click like, sit back, and relax. It's gonna be a lot of fun. video is going to be an introduction to the course. We're going to go over all of the materials that you're going to need. We're going to talk about how to learn this course material and we're going to talk about the schedule of things to come. So I want to start by giving you guys a little bit of information about photography and about art photography specifically since that's what we're going to be talking about here. First and foremost I want to demystify a couple of things right off of the bat. Anybody, and I mean this, look me in the eyes, anybody can be a good photographer. Now, granted, some people are born with a knack for it, some people are born with a gift, and some people aren't, but I truly believe that anybody can be a great photographer because everybody is an artist deep down in their hearts, right? All of us, when we were in kindergarten, we loved to make, right? We'd go to school, we'd get out the crayons, and we'd get out all the stuff, and we'd start drawing, and we were so excited to make our macaroni pictures and bring them home to mom and dad. We're all artists in our hearts. We all have something to communicate, and doing that visually or doing that creatively comes naturally to most humans. Now, uh, our education system spends your years from K-12 kind of beating the art out of you. So I spend a lot of time with my college students at the intro level teaching them to think creatively again. And we're going to talk about those same tips, tricks, and strategies in this course. So first and foremost, right off the bat, you're an artist, whether you realize it or not, and you have the capacity to be a great photographer. We just got to teach you how to see, think, and respond like a photographer and that's what we're gonna do you don't need expensive gear to be a good photographer just like if I go out and I buy a bunch of really fancy expensive kitchen equipment that's not gonna make me a good chef right what makes me a good chef is understanding food understanding flavor and being open to creative experimentation these are things that make you a good chef and these are also the same kinds of things that make you a good photographer. Having a really high-end camera is not what's gonna make your photos great. Learning how to think like a photographer, learning how to see like a photographer, and understanding visual language, these are the things that are gonna make your photos great. And we're gonna learn how to do all of that stuff. So what you need for this course is gonna be an open mind, a set of eyes, and some sort of device that can capture an image be it your cell phone, a point and click, or a really fancy camera. It doesn't matter because we're not gonna talk about the camera, we're gonna talk about you, the artist, how to make the camera do what you want. So the camera is a tool, not like a tool like this or like this. The camera is just an object, it's just a device that helps you to translate what you want to see on your image. Just like a pencil is not gonna write your memoir, the pencil is the tool that you're using to write your memoir. Do you kind of get what I'm going for? You picking up what I'm putting down? You smell what I'm stepping in? This is what I'm talking about. So you don't need to have a high-end camera. If you have a cell phone, you have a set of eyes and a halfway decent brain, I think you're going to do just fine. So some of the things that you can expect to learn in this course. We're going to go over what makes a photo good, quote unquote good, versus bad. How do we tell the difference between a quality image and a not so great image, right? When we're inundated with images, this can be a difficult thing to do. I'm gonna give you all of my resources to help you improve very quickly. We're gonna teach you how to see like an artist and how to see like a photographer. And we're also gonna go over some of the elements and principles of design. These are kind of like the backbone, the meat and potatoes of being an artist. And these will be translatable to all of the courses that I'm gonna be offering here, not just intro to photo. So I think it'll be a really good value for you. So this course is gonna be broken down into a series of 10 videos. 
Each video is going to focus on a particular topic or theme related to photography, and it's going to introduce some tips, tricks, and skills that you can immediately pick up your camera and start playing around with. Now each week that I release a video, those skills are going to build on each other. So by the end, you're going to have this muscle memory of how to make good photos, of how to think creatively, of how to start putting into practice some of this new visual language you're learning, and I really think that you're going to see a major difference between the photos you're taking now and the photos that you're taking at the end of the 10 week course. So photography has been around for a hot minute, about 150 years. There's been a lot of people making photographs for a really, really long time. So this bears the question, why? Why should we even bother making images? Especially in a day and age where we are bombarded with imagery, right? I think it's safe to say that we are an image saturated culture. To give you a little bit of context, in 2014, the Mary Meeker's annual internet trends report released um, a study that explained that on average, there are 1.8 billion images uploaded to the internet every single day. 1.8 billion every day. So if we compound that for a year, that's 657 billion photos a year. Oh my God, that doesn't even make sense to my brain, right? My art brain cannot process how much imagery that is. So another way to think about this would be that every two minutes, we as humans take more photographs than have ever existed in the 150 years of photography combined. Every two minutes, we are producing more images than ever existed in 150 years. That is bananas. So that begs the question, why bother? Why bother making images at all if that many images exist? Aren't we just kind of screaming into the void and nobody can see anything because there's everything available? Well, sure, that's a pretty cynical way to look at it and I think some people do, but I'm gonna challenge that belief system with a couple of other perspectives on photography. One of which is Ways of Seeing by John Berger. This was a video series and an accompanying book released in 1972 that kind of decodes how we see and why we are drawn to making images, be them painting or photography. Now I have a link to both the PDF of the book because again, I'm all about giving stuff away for free. Um, I also have a link down below to the YouTube video of episode four, which talks about photography specifically. It might be a really great place to start, especially if you're interested in digging deeper with this course. Another resource that I wanna share with you is a TED Talk by David Griffin, who is a National Geographic photographer. In his TED Talk called How Photography Connects Us, he talks about why images matter, why it matters that we wanna take photographs, and what photographs mean for us as a culture of people who are very narrative driven and who wanna share stories. I think that it's a really inspiring video. It's definitely worth your time. And if you have any serious interest in photography as a hobby or hopefully as a, as a career or a creative outlet in the future, it's worth watching. So please check it out. So with all of this here, it still leads us back to the question of why make photographs and what makes a good or a bad photo. Sometimes it's really hard to tell. We're gonna go over that extensively over the next couple of videos, starting off with composition, which is gonna be our first kind of deep dive into what it means to make photographs. So the first optional assignment that I've included down below is called Important Photographers. And it's a list of photographers that I've compiled from the 150 some odd years of photography that I think are influential or important in some way. But what I'd like you guys to do is run down the list. Just Google these names, get familiar with the types of images they make, and spend a little bit of time thinking about why they ended up on this list. Some of them might challenge your sense of taste, your sense of style. Some of them um, might not be your cup of tea, but if they're on the list, they have some sort of merit or value in the history of photography as an art form, and so I think that their name's worth knowing. The next optional assignment that I've included in the list below is called the Annotated Bibliography. Now, for those of you who have spent time in school, I think you know what an annotated bib is, but if you're not familiar or you're non-traditional or maybe you've never gone to school, then an annotated bibliography is a compilation of short annotations, short sentences about different resources that you've read. This is a great way to train your brain to start taking notes and to thinking about your resources and keeping a good running list of those resources. 
I will get you started with a list of my five uh, top resources for photography based on photographers I like and the types of images I like to make. Those are down below. Uh, links to the Amazon books or links to where you can find them for free online so that that way you can start your research. If you have any questions, of course, don't hesitate to ask. So I want you to take this assignment as an opportunity to really start considering why you might want to be a photographer and what sort of subjects are of interest to you outside of just the fact that you're interested in photography. So what you're going to do is you're going to write down 10 questions that you have. And these questions can be about yourself, they can be about your community, or they can be about the world at large. It really doesn't matter. It's up to you. I want you to brainstorm and just kind of let things come out. It's okay if the questions are silly or if they're trite or if they're cliche. Don't worry about that. Just write them out. So these can be very broad or they can be very specific. Your call. I want you to think about issues. I want you to think about ideas. And I want you to think about areas that really concern or intrigue you. After you write your 10 questions, in parentheses beside them, I want you to write out a list of five keywords. So what this means is that if I write the question, what is beauty? which is a very big question, it's very cliche in the arts, it's very open, then I'm gonna write out five things that come to mind when I think about the question, what is beauty? So for me, that could be physical, right? Physical beauty, bodies are beautiful, people are beautiful, nature might be another keyword that comes to mind. Um, perfection is something that I often associate with beauty, right? So I'm starting to just list off the things that I think of when I think of the question, what is beauty? Do you see how that works? Now this can be, this is very broad, this can also be very specific. If you are super into, um, I don't know, cats, why are cats awesome is a great question. So five things that you might list about cats could be toe beans, have you seen them? They're amazing. Uh, could be their cute little noses. It could be fluffiness. It could be attitude. Whatever keywords come to mind for you about why cats are awesome, you're gonna write those in parentheses beside your question. Next, after you've got your 10 questions and you've got your five keywords for each of your 10 questions, I want you to pick one. I want you to go back through that list and pick the one that you keep coming back to. The one that you're most excited about, the one that maybe scares you a little bit because it's a challenge, the one that you really want to explore, or maybe the one that is the most difficult to photograph or the one that doesn't readily put images in your mind. Whatever it may be, pick the one that you keep coming back to and choose that one question and I want you to just write a paragraph about why that's of interest to you. It doesn't have to be formal, you can write it any way you want, but keep it somewhere like in your sketchbook or you can write it in your phone if that's what you're using to take your photographs because you're gonna come back to this throughout the course. This is gonna be kind of your motivator. It just is a reminder of what is inspiring to you. And of course, as you look at photographers over the next 10 weeks and you think about um, image making and you think about all the things that you wanna do, you might change that question and that's totally fine. This is an exercise you're welcome to come back to throughout the course or throughout your creative endeavors. It's a great way to kind of brainstorm and get the, get the gears going.